<laughs> these are the last couple of hives. I just had a few of these. These are just hanging around my house, really. But they might as well join the fray out there at the Almond Blossom. So we're gonna just strap them up and take them out there this morning. As per normal, because we get distracted with everything else that's going on, with trying to keep this show together for you guys, I get a little bit behind, so it's all good though. Right, so. Gotta go and find another strap. Hold on. <laughs> oh, look. Ta da! <laughs> this is what happens when they're faithfully put back. <sighs> now, youngsters out there, when your dad says to put shit away so you can find it next time, start to learn that crap early because it's a good option. Because I never know where shit is. <laughs> oh. Oh. Being that we're doing this in the morning, so is that we've got some daylight to show you guys what goes on. I've shut the little doors on my paradise box. Of course, these ladies were just out for a little bit of a pee in the morning, you know, when you wake up first up, you gotta grab a little tinkle. So they've come back from that and they've gone, damn, the bloody door shut. You imagine coming back from the bathroom and you can't get back into bed. That'd be a bit rough, wouldn't it? But if I open the door, then there'll be 20 more out here, so <laughs> we might just leave them on the outside. <sighs> oh! Ah, <sighs> yeah. I just having a bit of a cackle to myself. Here we are picking up our four bee boxes. There's, there's like bloody road trains of bees running around the Riverland at the minute for Almond Blossom. If you're watching this and you happen to have a big truck and lots and lots of bee boxes, don't judge me too harshly. This is just the tail end little bit. That might have been a little cord we cut, I reckon. A little indicator lock, because this side's not too big. Cool thing about this, I don't even have to make sound effects, they make their own. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, according to the directions, you don't need to give this a hit. You can just loosen the handle off correctly and then they just slide out nice and easy. <laughs> I reckon try doing that with a, with it. Try doing this in a normal bee, without a bee suit. If you're using normal bloody boxes and see how you get on. I reckon we'd had our asses stung off. So this is another advantage of these paradise boxes. They're pretty bloody sealed. I didn't like that idea. <laughs> Or I wouldn't have to do that bit. <laughs> I like the fact it's got a reversing beat. You know, as if you, how, how cool is that little fork? You gotta love bloody, what is it called? Occupational health and safety or whatever it's called. I had to have a beeper on his friggin' factory powered forklift trolley thing. As if you'd run yourself over, honestly. <laughs> yeah, fair enough on a big forklift. You need it to go beep beep so you don't run the neighbours over, but shit. <laughs> really isn't it well it's not really a big release it's only four boxes but still anyway everyone counts <laughs> hello ladies <laughs> hello like where the hell are we <laughs> that's a good seal see how when you open it up how quick they're all into it i don't think they're over happy with us but they're gonna be in a minute when they figure out where they just ended up because they'll be like going shit yeah it's paradise let's get a guts full of pollen <laughs> Oh, actually, let's get a leg full of pollen. 
safely arrived. The ladies are all getting a having a little bit of an orientation flight. Thing is, they won't have to go too far to find something to nibble on around here. I mean, we've got a whole blooming orchard full of flowers. So hopefully they get a little bit of a boost, a little bit of pollen, a little, almonds have got a little bit of nectar. They won't get a honey flow, but there's a little bit of nectar on them. So um, yeah, it's a good start to the season and roll on spring. Here comes the madness. <laughs> This is what happens here in Oz, or ever around anywhere else where you grow almonds. This is the start of the excitement. So hopefully, some of these will turn into almonds. You know, hell, all those blossoms can't turn into almonds, otherwise the tree would collapse. But the idea is, our little ladies come along here, and they get onto this little bit of, see that little end parts? That's where all the pollen is. And they come along and they nibble on that. Or they go inside the flower to get some nectar, either way they get the pollen stuck to them. And then they fly off to another flower, so they take the boy pollen from there and they insert it into the girl pollen, and I don't think they intend to do that, but the tree knows it needs to happen. And then us poor silly almond growers, we hope we actually get some money out of all this madness. So that's probably not a real scientific um, explanation, but I just reckon nature is fascinating. You know, the bees need the pollen and the nectar. The trees, maybe, I don't know, did the trees figure that shit out and turn up with this pretty flower and nectar and pollen so that it could all work together? Kind of thinking the other day about the only thing that doesn't fit into the system in the planet and us people, isn't it? <laughs> So before the almonds end up on your muesli or as almond butter, is it almond butter, almond paste, or just, just eat the bloody things out of a tin is pretty cool for a snack. But anyway, they come on a tree, this is them getting ripe, and we come along and give them a bit of a rattle and they fall off and onto the ground. But I thought I'd show you, before they get to that point, they're a closed up little green nut like this, and then they get ripe and split open and of course, if you were a peach grower and your bloody peaches split in half, you'd be really dark on that. But there's the seed. And I'm a bit piss poor, so I'll get two seeds and rub them together, then I can crack them open for you. You know, push them. If you, if you want to know how to crack an almond and you haven't got a nutcracker with you, you get two together and one of them will be harder than the other. Hopefully, get rid of that one. And then you finish it off and you give it a little wriggle. And look, hey presto, there's a nut. Oh my goodness, how clever is that? <laughs> and that's the little bit that you get to eat. Well, that one's probably gonna get covered in sugar and end up on somebody's wedding thing. What's that called? What do you get that when you call that a wedding thing? What's that with a Bomery, Baymarie? No, that's a heating up thing. Um 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 <gasps> Bombardieri, that's what they are. <laughs> chocolate covered almonds on a bombardieri. Oh, my little girl's gonna get married soon. We might have to have some chocolate covered bombardieris, but I bet you she'll say, that's not happening, Dad. Because <laughs> there you go. Anyway, that's a soft shell, which is probably what you're gonna get in your supermarket, which is a nice non pareil. But we're not allowed to call them. No, they used to be called paper shells or Californian paper shells, but of course we're not in California, which is where they come from. So we couldn't call them Californian paper shells anymore. We had to call them something else. So the Almond Board spent, I don't know how many thousands of dollars to research the name and we decided to call them non-perennials. I personally thought that was just a little bit lame ass and I think we should have just called them golden nuggets or something or other, but that might have been a bit weird too. Anyway, so there you go. You've got a non pareil or a Californian paper shell. Well, an Australian paper shell. Maybe we could have just called them Australian paper shells. What would have been wrong with that? And we've got a Johnson. And then we've got this one. This is a Summerton, which is what we've got here, which is sort of the knee plus of Australia. And that's another size. And what other ones have we got? I haven't actually, oh, and we've got a new one over here, which is an input planted. Of course, there's no end to the bloody amount of varieties of almonds that they keep creating. This is the little one I've got planted in between nail trees here that I'm trying to get organized. 
Which row am I in? I think these are the Monterey's. I've got some prices up there and I've got some Monterey's here. So looks like a Monterey more than the price. Anyway, so that's another thing that they're trying to implement. Hopefully, things the almond prices were so half reasonable, I didn't want to actually want to cut the old tree down. So I thought I'd just put a new tree in the middle, but I think it's a dopey idea. As a matter of fact, I think I should have just pushed them out and started again. But anyway, <sighs> wouldn't be like me to do anything practical, would it? Thank God. <laughs> oh, there you go. Those are the ones that end up in your manufacturing. So that's the four varieties that we have in this immediate vicinity where we're standing at the minute. And the lad reckons we're going to actually show you some footage of us doing this job. So, hell, that should be fun. Come and check out some dust get made. <laughs> But you wouldn't believe it, the other day we were fossicking through Nana's cupboard. My poor mother, she's got all excited and decided she's going to tidy up the house. Which is rather interesting, so she's throwing out a bit of stuff. But we found some old videos. How cool is that? Anybody remember videos back in the day? Anyway, camcorders and all that sort of crazy shit. My mum had one of them and she was recording some really cool footage. And we actually stumbled across our first harvest in the Riverland, which was old school with an almond boat and bloody sheets and kids and, and wives trying to avoid the job, which was kind of cool. <laughs> I, mean, I reckon when I was watching it with the lad here not so long ago, I noticed why he's not an almond grower, because he lost interest and he was only five and he was like, this is, just looks like hard work. I might go and find a real job, which I think was a good idea. Anyway, I might just describe what you're watching. Back in the day, we used to have a long trailer, which we called an almond boat. And we used to have these rack mesh sheets on it, which were made out of like 50% shade cloth. And then you roll out the sheets under the tree and then you tuck them over top of each other. So you've got the tree here, say, and you're tucking the sheets around the tree so you don't get any stuck in the gap. And then you had a thing called a mallet and you bash the shit out of it like a caveman. Ready to knock some almonds. First tree, so look on, out. on the beginning of this harvest, in 1993, it's Mark going to do the damage. And Ross is waiting impatiently. He can't stop. Ready, Ready. set, go! Oh! Run, man! Let him go! Look at the almonds coming down. A little bit primitive. You got awful fit, or anyway. I think the first week you felt like you were going to die, and then after a little while you just drifted into this. I don't know what it was called, but I think you were just numb to the insanity. <laughs> and you were just, I guess because it was the payday for the year, so you had to get the shit off the tree. Anyway, so you beat the shit out of the thing with a mallet, and then you had a stick. It's fairly, we thought that out a lot, didn't we? We called it a stick, and we were knocking, so we were a knocking stick. So that's pretty good. Good. We used to smash a few of them on the day. Anyway, so you knock the tree with a stick, and then you roll the sheet in. As you see, you roll the sheets up, fold them up, and you pull them into the almond boat. And that went on and on and on and on and on. And days went into weeks, went into months, went into... Why the hell I'm still an almond grower? I have no idea. But anyway, that went on. And you finally got the almond boat full. As you can see, the almond boat's full. And then you had to go and shovel the bloody shit out. We used to have trays, but in this particular show, we've only got a sheet. So you'd lay them out on a sheet to dry, leave them dry in the sun for a little while. Probably, depends on how bloody hot it was, about three or four days. And then you had to roll the sheets up into a pile, then shovel them back into the trailer, and then shovel them into the shed. Hell, it's no wonder I'm nearly knackered, is it? <laughs> of course, if I was still harvesting in that format, I don't think I'd still be an almond grower because it's just bloody too, too jolly hard and stupid. But the lad's here, so we're going to show you how we do it in this modern format. Well, I'm not super modern. I'm sort of, we could, you know, if you've got really fancy shit, but I've got some half reasonable stuff that'll give you a general idea of how it's done. So come along and we'll stir up some dust. Here's the first part of the operation. Instead of a rubber mallet, we've got a bloody shaker that just rips the shit off the trees. Much better idea, you get to sit in here in air-conditioned comfort, listen to your latest iTunes or podcast or whatever the hell else you're doing. I'll just put my trusty hat on and we'll get into it. <laughs>
in the mallet look like bloody primitive activity, doesn't it? Yeah. That would have been a whole day's work by the armoured boat standards. <laughs> Wish I was actually that strong. All I've got to do is, I've got a strong thumb. Anyway, here we are, stage two. We've got to get our sweeper out and line up them nuts that we just shook off the tree. Well, actually, these are a thing done a few days ago because you've got to let them dry out a bit. And so we'll just line them up and we'll show you how that's done. It's a bit easier than a rake. So if you're watching that sweeper driving along and you're wondering what the hell is going on, underneath that top cover there's some paddles and these paddle wheels go along like that and sweep all the almonds into the middle of the row as you can see and the big heap of dust and noise out the back, well that's just a big blower so you can blow them from underneath the tree so when you come back the other way you sweep them into the other side of the row. expose a this would be stage three or the final stage depending on how you put it so we've got the pickup machine another bloody dusty noisy piece of excitement little old tractor on the front that's had seen better days poor thing got bought by me it didn't have a chance got the lovely pickup machine from california the boys that know what's going on and then we've got a trailer on the back of the machine which actually holds all the almonds of course and then we cart them back here to the shed if we were really fancy, of course, we'd have a bank out trailer and we wouldn't have to drive back here all the time, but hell, there's only so much crap a bloke can afford to buy at a time. Ah, <sighs> the weather's been a bit hectic out here of doing this harvest, but at least my lips are under control with me and wife's lovely lip balm. Oh, I tell you what, is that an un, un... is that a ruddy ad or whatever, but anyway, I don't know, I'm not normally a lip balm person, but this shit's good. So, I'll put some more on. proper bank out you'd actually hit that lever there and then the elevator turns on but poor old bush b man almond grower aka he's got a bit of old rod to hold it in <laughs> i had to weld a bit of round pipe on there but anyway there's a flat chain that drops onto this chain that lifts it up and then we're going to drop it into this trailer and that's going to go whizzing up there onto a pile Sometimes I actually do it out in the field, but just at the minute it was easy to do it here and I thought, well, that's a look cool too. <laughs> so here we go. Let's make some noise. That's one variety down. I remember when the kids were little, they used to go sliding down these heaps and get bloody sticks and stuff stuck in their legs and shit, and yet I'd get told off for that. And it wasn't even my thought idea for it to happen. Oh God, I'm just sitting here, I'm thinking, I don't know what it is about farming. This job, I'm all covered in crap and itchy and dusty as shit. When I'm beekeeping, I'm all sticky. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, just as well a bloke could have a smile. Go easy. No worries. That'll keep, that'll keep us nibbling for a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. So, we've just thought we'd come up here and pick up our holdback, which is what you get as a grower. You can ask them to hold back a few, few of your almonds so you can have something to eat and share with your friends and family. 
and we'll just have a bit of a look in here and see what we've got. If we're lucky, and um, some of the guys turn up, we might be able to have a bit of a quick look through the plant, which would be awesome. And so that'd be kind of cool. It's pretty pretty full on. So let's see what we've got in here. See what sort of job we did. Oh, that looks right. Oh, that long. Mm -hmm. So that's where they come out of the cracking plant, and then they'll go over to the processing plant where they get packed. But mm -mm -mm. that's all me hard work. That's a whole year's worth of excitement there. Well, not this little bit. This is just the extras. But mm -mm. yum yum yum. I'm just, you know, this is pretty mind-boggling for us guys growing up on an almond farm down Wollonga. We had a little processing plant on our own block. Yeah. Being a little kid, I'm there with a shovel, shoveling the almonds into the jolly cracker machine. <laughs> so, I mean, that'll make you laugh, wouldn't it? Yeah. Look at this bucket over here. That's a bit more, that's a serious shovel. It's definitely a lot more uh, automated now, the whole oh, process. Oh, Lord. And, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Anyway, here we are. We've jumped up here to the processing plant, the Bush Bee Man on the travel. Young Nick here is going to show us around. He's the marketing rep from, from Armand Co, which is pretty awesome. He's going to show us around the plant. And uh, I tell you what, this industry's really changed in the last 30 years that I've been around, or 50 years I've been around, but anyway, let's not, let's not get too complicated with my age. Good on you, Nick. Nice G'day. to see you, bud. Nice to meet you, yeah, Let's go, cool, Nick. Let's go and check this shit out, eh? Absolutely. So this is how they come off the truck, out of the orchard, before they actually get to that processing plant that you're checking out in a minute. Obviously, when they come off the tree, they've got their little husk on still. If I can find one that actually is a husk. And then they have a shell bit, which is, which is what they're trying to get off in here. Because this is this is really really cool for the cows to eat. I don't know, I reckon Nick reckons they're going to make some booze out of this skin, so I'm pretty cool with that. Hang on, there's nothing in that one. That's a bit wrong. <laughs> anyway, and then of course you crack it open, which is what that machine's doing in there. And you get yourself a little kernel, which is kind of groovy. Mm -mm. Brittle bars, isn't it? No, hang on, almond brittle bars. <laughs> Man, have a look at that. They're all, all full of kernels, I'm guessing. Yeah, all full yeah. of kernels. Wow, wait. Goodness me. Woo! Yep, so the That's scale it. is uh, pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's unreal, isn't it? Cool. Look at that. You can hear the rumble in the distance. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to put our earplugs in so we don't go deaf. <laughs> There's quite a few moving parts. Yeah, yeah. So this is basically the start of the process. They drop them in here, either out of the trucks or out of this big front end loader that they got here, which is kind of groovy. They've got a big pit where they drop the armors in. And obviously they come out of the field covered in sticks and sand and a bit of rock and all sorts of carry on, which is a bit of a worry. You know, so well, they've got this awesome setup down here. They've got some organs in the bottom of this pit. And it goes up that elevator. And up the top of there, you've got a de-sander, a de-sticker, and a de-stoner. So that gets the initial crap out of the almonds, and then it goes across into the processing, where it takes off the holes, or that pus, and obviously the holes, and then it goes through the different size rollers. I think they're shear rollers, I think they're called. And they go through them, and then that basically cracks them in different stages for the different sizes that they want. And then ultimately they go through some more screens, and then you'll see them pop out the other end where they get sized, which is kind of cool. And obviously a bit of, what are they called? Seeing eye machine, is it? Yeah, which is pretty amazing. We've bloody come a long way from since I was a kid on the sorting belt, I tell you that for free. God. <laughs> I tell you, I was still sorting arms by hand, I don't think I'd be in this industry anymore. That and a bloody almond boat. Damn. <laughs> So once they've got them out of those little boxes, you sell them there in their half ton containers at the other shed. Obviously they load them on some trucks and they bring them here. And this is where they do the, the final sorting. This is a hell. I reckon it was only that big a factory when I moved here 30 years ago and now it's like filled up the whole lot. So I don't know what's gonna go on when the, when the business expands a bit more. But anyway, I guess they just buy the neighbors, who knows? Anyway, so obviously the truck heads through these doors and inside there it's all very hygienic and very sealed. And so they, this is where they do another grading. The first part is they tip them through another grader and then it goes through some more of those seeing eye machines that you saw, which is kind of cool. I think it even, it goes on a hand sorting belt. It gets pasteurized, which makes it all nice and healthy. They also blanch them, roast them and flavor them and do all sorts of other cool stuff here. And obviously on sell them to other people to do that as well in different markets. And from here, once they get packaged, they go all around the world and so it's pretty awesome so my almonds could end up anywhere a bit like my honey could end up anywhere but that's this is a lot bigger scale than my little honey market <laughs>